greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 5 to 25. Uh, Philip went down to the main city of Samaria and uh, became and began proclaiming the Christ. Now, this is not talking about Samaria as a city, but it is talking about uh, one of the main places or the most important place of Samaria. Um, and uh, uh, that that was where the Holy Spirit card took him. And um, this was mostly viewed as uh, the town of Gita. Um, and there he began proclaiming Christ to them. Now, this is a very, very um, big breakthrough in the uh, church expansion. Because when we read uh, John's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 9, um, the Samaritan woman was telling uh, the Lord Jesus, Jews don't speak to us. We don't associate with them. How do you ask me a drink? Now, what was happening here was a big a ripple of what happened in John chapter 4, where the whole Samaritan village came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, these Samaritans who did not associate with the Jews, now they were believing that Jesus, who was uh, uh, humanly a Jew, was the savior for them. And this was done by the proclamation that uh, um, uh, Stephen uh, was giving. And this is very, very crucial because um, this, this kind of proclamation for the first time was going outside the frontiers of uh, uh, Israel. And uh, people believed the gospel because Christ was proclaimed. When uh, Christ is not uh, proclaimed, but people believe some kind of good news about blessing or uh, about uh, prosperity or any other thing where Christ is not preached, it is no good news at all. Because what has an end can never be good eternally. You, you, we can get all that we desire that we think is good for us in this world. But of what use is it, the Lord Jesus says, if one gains the whole world but loses his soul. So eternity, time is what makes things matter. And uh, this person or Philip goes to Samaria and he starts preaching about Christ. This was the, the, this was the specific way. The only way in which the uh, apostles uh, preached the gospel throughout scripture, they did not preach about the after effects of the gospel that you will get this or uh, uh, they did not uh, coerce people towards some kind of gain, but they preached a Christ-centered gospel showing that if we accept the gospel and through the gospel, the greatest gift that we get is God himself. And it's not just uh, uh, some uh, some place called heaven or, or, or any of these kinds, but the best thing that we're going to get as a result of uh, accepting the gospel is uh, the uh, is being in right being right with God and having an eternal hope that we will be with God and um, if that hope is just temporal then uh, Paul writes uh, we are to be pitied more than all men and um, he goes on to say that uh, the crowds paid uh, great att attention and uh, they saw all the miraculous signs that he was performing. Now, in the contrast, we see uh, from verse 9 onwards, we see about uh, uh, Simon the sorcerer. Now, miraculous signs was different from magic. That's what uh, uh, Simon was doing. So, uh, miraculous signs were to prove two points. The first thing is that it was definitely a supernatural miracle. And sign is to prove that the message that they were telling was not a powerless message, but it was a true message and it was accompanied by power. So miraculous sign always shows that it was a miracle, but it doesn't end just in the recipient but uh, or the one who does it, but it ends as a way to attest the uh, message that the one or uh, uh, the the one who prayed over the miraculous sign was proclaiming. So these people were proclaiming Christ. And uh, in verse 5, we see he was proclaiming Christ. And then uh, the next verse in verse 6, miraculous sign. So these miracles were as a sign to show that his preaching that Christ was uh, the Lord and the Messiah was true. And uh, unclean spirits came out. And this is uh, almost the first time that uh, 
outside the 12 people were performing miraculous signs uh, uh, through the gospel through the power of the holy spirit and uh, there was uh, great joy in the in that city now great joy uh, was because uh, they came to know god and uh, when they believed the uh, the lord jesus christ and they believed that uh, though he was a jew he was the messiah they obviously obviously broke and shattered their uh, samaritan ethnicity and their pride they broke it and the best way to live a happy life is to be free from every kind of pride now in that uh, city there was also a man called simon who practiced sorcery or in other words he was practicing magic and he had amazed the people of samaria now uh, the difference between the lord jesus christ uh, uh, and his miracles and uh, uh, the magic shows that we see today is the magic is shown only in order to cause uh, people to wonder in order to uh, uh, cause people to speculation and uh, they should just be wooed into a spectacular euphoristic feeling but uh, the lord jesus's miracles none of these miracles was shown or was done just uh, to amaze people but it always had a practical aspect either it was the need of the people or it was uh, the need of the situation or it was uh, uh, to uh, for their protection or for their provision it was never just to amaze people so uh, magic is done to amaze people but the lord jesus does things um, to uh, uh, to benefit or to help people to protect people to protect uh, to provide for their needs so we can easily very easily um, uh, see that nowhere people did miracles or uh, the apostles never did miracles just to amaze people they uh, met some practical need and uh, when we uh, get to see in today's world that people are performing miracles just to amaze then we can be sure that it is not an apostolic faith it is not uh, a way that jesus or the apostles worked wherein uh, the person who is working the miracle gets all the glory and people are amazed at him and it is pointed towards obviously people were amazed with jesus also but G- that was not the major motive of the lord jesus but uh, for simon the major motive itself was to amaze people and draw people to him and uh, uh, when um, people saw the miraculous signs that he was doing they said he uh, the great power of he is the great power of uh, god and uh, um, just because something spectacular spectacular happens that doesn't mean uh, that that obviously doesn't attest to uh, god's power because satan also has power to do supernatural things and uh, one of the one of the best way we can understand is only god is all powerful and he has that greatest power to be able to work upon the life of somebody and change the nature no magic has uh, the capacity to change or uh, to uh, to change our our motives our lifestyle uh, the imagination the inclination of our heart uh, no magic has uh, Uh, the strength to do that magic can only change the way we think the philosophies we think the ideologies it can hypnotize us to believe something uh, it can bring us into hallucinations but uh, only only uh, the gospel of the lord jesus christ can bring us into conviction and uh, into conversion and into sanctification and uh, all of these people in that town or in that city were believing and they were being baptized and added to the kingdom in verse 13 it says that simon himself believed and he was also baptized but then when we read the following verses we get to know that uh, um, the, he was not truly convicted he was not truly converted so uh, what does it mean that simon himself believed and was baptized that means he had an intellectual belief uh, or uh, he believed uh, um, intellectually he trusted the truth of uh, the gospel but he was not convicted he did not really accept it, it was just an intellectual uh, uh, trust it was just an intellectual belief um, and so um, this this kind of uh, belief uh, is not salvation salvation is the work of god wherein our belief is also attested by the power of the holy spirit god to bring in us an a hatred for sin 
um, and we we can read those in the following verses. Um, when the apostles in Jerusalem uh, heard that uh, Samaria had accepted the word, then they sent Peter and John, and they come and uh, uh, they lay their hands on them. Um, and by laying their hands, they received the Holy Spirit. In verse 18, uh, it says, because they, they were only baptized, but they did not receive the Holy Spirit. Now, um, does it make it a pattern? Absolutely not. Now, there are three places in which uh, the uh, Holy Spirit God came upon them in a visible way, uh, in a tangible way. And uh, the first thing was what happened in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, where the apostles were present. And here also in Samaria, when the gospel spread to Samaria, so this is the first time it is crossing the boundaries of uh, Israel and it is going to Samaria. And so uh, they needed a visible attestation to know that it was the work of God, that God had really accepted these Samaritans. And so um, God used the apostles uh, to show this visible sign of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the third uh, consequence we see is in uh, Cornelius' house, uh, wherein uh, um, that was totally Gentile. Um, and at that point of time, uh, though um, Philip would have been there, yet uh, in, in that same place, yet um, we, we see that only when Peter goes and preaches, they receive the Holy Spirit. So this is not a pattern, but it is just to show that God accepted these Gentiles. God accepted the Samaritans. It is just a visible sign to show that these people were also being added by God. Um, and uh, we, we and after that, we don't see this practice. We don't see this uh, command anywhere given that you need to be, uh, uh, hands need to be laid on you in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, it was just in the initial stages. So Acts chapter 2 and uh, Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 10 are the initial places where uh, the work began in Israel, the work began in Samaria and the work began among the Gentiles. In verse 18, Simon saw that uh, the apostles, when they laid hands, people received the Holy Spirit and he also wanted to uh, receive that. The reason he wanted to get that is because he was bitterly envious. The, in verse 23, we can see uh, he was bitter. That is, he was trying, but he couldn't do that. Uh, and he was also envious. Uh, uh, people were being attracted to uh, Simon, uh, Peter and John and this teaching of Jesus and people uh, were not getting attracted to him. And so he wanted this gift. He wanted to uh, purchase uh, this gift, but no gift of God can be purchased. And so we need to be very, very careful with the gift that God has given us because there are scores of people out there who want to spend and get that gift, but they cannot. And so we need to really with accountability uh, use this gift that the Lord has given us. And uh, he says, you will perish, uh, may your silver and you perish. Um, this is a strict warning because you try to uh, uh, think that you can do it by yourself by purchasing with financial power. No, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. We're not doing it to attract people. We're not doing it for financial gain. We're not doing it for our own um, gratification, but it is the work of God. And uh, um, Simon immediately, he says, uh, you pray uh, that what you said might not happen to me, that you said you will, I will perish. Pray that I should not perish. But we don't, uh, we, it, in scripture is silent about whether Peter and John prayed or not. Uh, but one thing we can very clearly recognize is without my personal dependence, nobody's prayers can bring me salvation. Nobody's prayers can give me eternal protection without my personal dependence. And that's why they say, uh, repent of your wickedness. That's the only way out. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be very cautious with the gifts that you give us. And uh, oh Lord, help us to be uh, very diligent in using them and not covet what is not ours. Help us to draw people only to a Christ-centered gospel rather than us. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.